so we've all had it. We've all been there before. We've seen that dreaded spinning circle, the buffering logo. This video is going to look at different ways that we can try and reduce or completely mitigate these kind of issues. Stick around. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So, as I say, we've been here before. We've seen this. This is the dreaded buffering circle, which basically means that the flow of information has stopped to our streaming device. Now, what causes this? Now, sometimes it might not be our fault altogether. It might be a problem at the other end, especially if you're using one of these free services or one of these questionable TV services that are on the cheap. But before we blame the other end, there are a few things that we can try. Now, the first things I would say try are probably the most easiest. Now, first of all, what I would say is unplug your router, your wireless router for at least 10 minutes. Let all the power drain out of it. This is the equivalent of clearing your cache on, a, uh, on an app. So unplug it. I know it might be tempting to uh, to turn it on sooner than 10 minutes, but if you do turn it on sooner than 10 minutes, it might not properly clean its memory out. So turn it off, leave it off. If, if you want to, perhaps leave it off overnight. There's no harm in leaving it off for longer than 10 minutes, but this will give it a good clear out. It'll also help adjust the Wi-Fi as well, because it could be that your Wi-Fi channel that your router is set at might be set to automatic. And it may be the last time it was turned on, perhaps it found a channel that was good at the time, but may not be as good now and might not give you as much speed for streaming. So it's a good idea, like I say, to turn that off. The second thing is whilst your router is turned off, it's a good idea to perhaps restart your streaming device. So if you're using a Fire Stick or Cube, go across to settings and then go down and across to My Fire TV and then go down to restart, middle button, go across to the second restart, middle button and let the device restart. Now, quite possibly when your device is restarted because your Wi-Fi is still off, your You'll probably get no network, but don't worry, that's quite normal. Now, the next thing to do is to go into settings and then go to applications into there and go down to manage installed applications. This if is this is if you're using a Fire Stick or Cube. And what you want to do is you just want to check to see how much space you've actually got. Now, what I would say is on any device, make sure you've at least got one GB of space left. If you've got less than one GB, then this could be a problem for you. And this could be as a result of your buffering because what happens is, is when you're streaming something, it saves information onto your streaming device for play out in the next few seconds. Now, that's called a, uh, a buffer or a cache. Now, if there's not enough room in that buffer or cache, then it could well be that it's not been able to save enough for pre-play in a couple of seconds time. So that could mean that buffering could happen. So if you have got less than one GB of space, then what I would say is perhaps if you can remove some unwanted applications or go through each application here and clear the cache. And you can simply do that on the Fire Stick or Cube by highlighting each one of these programs in here and just press the fast forward button and that will clear the cache for each app. Now, another thing that's worth doing is perhaps running a speed test. So go into your app store and just search for speed test and you will find quite possibly a whole host of speed tests here. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. I'm just going to choose this first one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a speed test just to make sure that my speed is good enough. Now, what 
is a good enough speed. So this particular one actually tells you uh, by these little uh, icons at the top of the screen, SD, HD, 4K and 8K. So this will tell you whether or not you're getting a good enough speed to stream. Now, generally I say as a rule of thumb, you need at least five Mbps download for SD quality, that standard definition, perhaps around about 15 for high definition, that's HD, and perhaps 30 megabits per second for 4K. 8K, that's very rare at the moment, but I would say as a rule of thumb, perhaps 80 megabits per second for 8K streams. So what if you're not achieving those speeds that you need to stream your content? Well, first of all, I would say check with your internet service provider and ask them what speeds you're getting. And if you're not getting the required speeds, ask them if there's anything they can do about it from their end. If they're telling you you're getting much higher speeds than what you're seeing on your streaming device, then there could well be an issue with either if you're using a VPN, that might cause an issue, or it could be a Wi-Fi issue. So first of all, I'm gonna tackle possible issues with the VPN. So if you've got a VPN, go into it, and perhaps as a test, turn the VPN off and then rerun the speed test again and just see if you're getting predominantly better speeds. If you're not, then the problem's nothing to do with the VPN. But if you're getting better speeds with the VPN switched off, then obviously we've got to fiddle with its settings to try and fine tune it. But what if you are getting those speeds, the required speeds, but you're still suffering from buffering? Well, this part may be of interest to you too, because this might also help. Now, the first rule of thumb is make sure that you are connected to a VPN server closest to your current location. This means the data hasn't got as far to travel. Secondly, try changing the protocol that your VPN is using. Now, generally the light WireGuard protocol is a good one to choose. This is often named differently, like for instance, in Nord, the, their WireGuard equivalent is called Nord Links. In ExpressVPN, it's actually called Lightway. Generally, these protocols that are based on WireGuard, such as Nord Links, Lightway, or WireGuard itself, are much more lightweight protocols, and therefore information should be able to fl flow quicker, and it should take less resources up on your streaming device too. Now, another protocol that I would recommend using if what the WireGuard protocol doesn't work is UDP. That, again, is another quick protocol, which is great for streaming. I would say if you can try and avoid TCP as your protocol, that is generally not the greatest for slowest. But who knows, if you've got more than one protocol available to you in your VPN, then why not try it? No harm can be done just by trying different protocols. And again, the same could be said when choosing countries too. If, for instance, the country that you're in doesn't have the fastest server, if you still have problems, then perhaps try the second closest country to you. That can also sometimes help. Now, what if you've still got problems with buffering? Now, if you aren't hitting the speeds in the speed tests that are required, then it could be there's a problem with your Wi-Fi. I would suggest if you can try and wire in your device with an Ethernet cable or get one of these mesh Wi-Fi systems. They're quite expensive, but they generally do the job, improve the Wi-Fi. Or if you can't do that, then try moving your Wi-Fi router or try moving your streaming device. Make sure that there's nothing in the way of it, nothing blocking the signal. Don't stick it inside a cupboard. If you can help it, don't stick it behind a television. All these sort of things will block the signal. If you've got a, a device that plugs into the television, into the HDMI port, and you can't help having it behind the television, then all you need to do is just buy an HDMI extension cable and move it out from the back of the television. So what if you're hitting the right speeds for your streaming service, but still are suffering from buffering? Then what I would suggest is perhaps get in touch with the streaming supplier and ask for advice there. Ask about any potential problems that they might have with their servers or services. If they say that they've not got any problems, then if you're a member of a forum or a social media group that is part of the same streaming service, then perhaps 
put out posts, ask other customers if they're suffering from problems too. If you can switch to a different service, try out a different service and see if you're still having problems with the new service. So there you go. I hope this guide helped. And if it did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you can't do that, have a look in the description down below. We've got loads of great links down there for you too, including links to my Amazon shop, Fire TV sticks, Fire TV cubes, Fire Stick accessories and VPNs. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time to spend researching to bring you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And if whilst you're here, you see anything that you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these videos on your social media timelines. Check me out on X. I'm at CWTEK. Also check out my website. It's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.